Okay guys, we are gonna be testing the William Optics 110 millimeter ED Magres on the moon. So let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show your best friend in astronomy, science, and telescopes. Actually, I don't have my mic on. Okay, you know what? Let's just forget about the mic for now. I'm sure you could probably hear me mostly. But anyway, uh, this is the William Optics 110 millimeter Magrez ED. And the moon is like almost a quarter moon. I believe maybe, maybe tomorrow or so. Um, so I just wanted to take a quick view. Let's look at it and see what we get. Uh, now let's see if we get any color fringing on this guy. So being that this is an ED doublet and it's very short, uh, F5.95, there could be some color correction. I wanna check it out. I'm gonna start with a 30 millimeter ultra wide angle and see, because if there's gonna be any false color, any color fringing, it's gonna be on the moon. So, I don't want to waste too much time. Let's get to it. Okay, so I put the camera over there so that way my voice is going outward to you guys. It will be easier. And um, let me see if I can. Okay, there we go. I already got it. Okay, I can see lots of craters. Now, this is a very low power. I don't know offhand. And it looks very sharp, actually. So I'm going to bump up the power. Let's go to something a lot more closer. Let's go to a 13 Nightler. Now remember too, as the moon is going to get closer to the horizon, it could introduce aspheric aberrations. And a lot of times that looks like chromatic aberration. So that's why I'm kind of hurrying. I can see the earth shine on the other side. Okay, so you know what? When I have the moon on the edge, I do see some yellow fringing but once I put the moon in the middle of the field of view it goes away and it just becomes white that's pretty impressive I think I think I do see a slight hint of chromatic aberration but it, you really got to look for it it's really not that bad look, I'm gonna bump up the power even more to see I'm gonna go to a Mead 4000 Japan made ultra wide angle We'll figure out that power after, but for now, let me take a look. It looks fairly sharp to me. I mean, I don't think as sharp as something like my Takahashi 128 or one of my other triplet APOs, but I think for most people, I don't think this scope was necessarily made for high planetary power. I think it was made for more wide field deep sky viewing. But saying that, focuser feels really nice. So you can see craters and craterlets by the hundreds. There's a three crater. You can, you can see the mountain range in the crater casting a shadow. So, you know, that's pretty good. I'm gonna even borrow it. Um, you know what, I'm gonna check the power. Okay, currently right now, it's at about 139 power. Looks pretty good to me. 139, I mean, that's not super close, but that's not super low either. I'm gonna put a two times Barlow in there and see if it's too much power. Again, the moon is, you know, about, uh, well, I don't know, about 20 degrees from the horizon. So that's gonna introduce some aberration aspheric as per operation so that's not the greatest uh, maybe test if it was you know midway in the sky or much higher up but I like that that's pretty good okay right now I'm at 278 power on the moon and it looks it looks pretty good I mean if I was an imager and I wanted like a dual scope uh, first of all, one that, you know, if you're like a 90% imager, but you once in a while you want to do a little visual, astronomy, um, and, or high power, you know, that's not bad at all. I mean, it's, go, it's going by 278 power, it's going by fairly quick. 
Um, I think most people would be happy. The true planetary viewers uh, probably would be a little bit disappointed, I guess, of, you know, that it's not as tack sharp. I am going a lot higher up. I mean, this guy should, if you go by the formula, should do about 220 comfortable. So I'm about um, 60 power roughly above that. So a good refractor should go to the theoretical limit uh, or even above it. It's not bad, but not perfect. So again, when I compare it to all my other videos that I've done, uh, it's not as tack sharp and contrast. But again, this is not really a planetary scope. If this was like an F8, F10, ED, then of course it would be much better. Or with a 53 lens or a triplet. But I think for most imagers, if you want something that's gonna be decent, it's not, not too bad. Not perfect, but uh, okay, I think that's good enough for now. Let me try. Saturn should be out in a couple hours. Right now it's behind the tree. So Saturn should be like around there right now. So if I wait till about 9.30, oh, I see it now. Uh, Saturn is right in between that crane. Let's see if I can show it to you guys. There we go, that star right there. So that's Saturn. So I'm gonna wait till it goes from there over to this side, maybe about there. So, uh, and then we'll test this guy on Saturn, but just based on what I see on the moon, it's, you know, fairly good, but not perfect. So again, you know, there's no perfect telescope, I guess, guys. This is an imager scope, and it's doing the moon okay good, not perfectly good. Uh, me, I'm not really an imager type of thing, so I think I would probably choose one that would be longer, like an F8, 110 millimeter F8. If, yeah, that'd probably be good with an ED lens, would produce a bit of contrast more, uh, a little bit image more but uh, it's for the moon it's okay for uh, an imager I would say okay okay guys so now I am wearing my mic so you can tell me if you think it's much louder than the first part I'm gonna try looking at Saturn okay let me get ready for you guys maybe I should try uh, I'll see if I can put the cell phone to it. Okay, I'm not using a finder scope. Okay, there we go. Found it already. I was just about to say I wasn't using a finder scope. Could take like a few seconds, but... Yeah, there it is. Okay. Again, at, uh, with a 30 millimeter, with this short focal length, is way too small of power. Let me put a 13 angler. Jumping from a 30 millimeter to a 13. A lot of times when you jump that high of a power, it might not be in the field of view. Okay, we're gonna jump all the way to a 4.7 Mead Ultra Wide Japan made. It's the 4000 series. So this will be 139 power. Let me see how it looks. It should, it should look pretty decent in this focal length or this power. Probably won't be huge. But um, I should be able to see some decent. Yeah, that's not too bad. I do see, I think, a very, very minor ha blue halo, I think, around it. Again, I'm going to pump up the power now with a two times Barlow, giving me 278 power now. So going about 60 power above its theoretical. And let's see how it looks. It's not bad, 278 power. You know what, guys? That's not too bad for a short little guy like this. Um, I don't know if I'm able to show you guys in uh, the camera. Okay, let me see if I can try. And uh, let me see if it works. So give me a few minutes. Okay, dear Saturn, I'm only using an 18 millimeter eyepiece. So it's not even um, high power at all very low and I'm blowing it up nine times on the screen just giving you guys a little taste so in the image or in the eyepiece directly without amplifying it which is you know the real power it's actually not too bad uh, and that's the real movement of it so I'm not using a tracking mount right now 
And I think Saturn doesn't look too bad for an imaging scope. Let me bring it back. Okay, what do you think now? Okay, I think that's enough. Let's go inside and talk about it. Hey guys, so let's talk about this. I'm positive that this guy is a doublet with 51 glass. And being that it's F focal ratio uh, 5.95, you know, 5.9, just under F6, it's very short, not too heavy. But I have used scopes with a doublet 51 glass that was also f6 i think even f7 and it was kind of lots of color fringing uh it was not the greatest i've also used some that was pretty good like a, with a lithanium mating glass and maybe it was figured better and it was a lot better color correction uh, of course that one i think was focal ratio I think 7.5, so a little bit longer, but it's hard to remember exactly, but it was around there and it was much better. So it just depends. So I'm almost positive that this is a 51 doublet. Now 51's on the lower end of the uh, APOED uh, type of glass. I don't know what the uh, mating element is, but as far as the imaging scope, uh, size and weight is probably perfect for a lot of people uh, it can collect a lot of light I mean a lot of people use like an 80 millimeter ED uh, 90 millimeter 102 so now one 110 is actually you know pretty decent at uh, 4.33 uh, inch diameter nice focuser overall uh, for an imagery scope it'd be very good now what do I think uh, especially if it's for wide field viewing of galaxies, nebulous clusters, and that stuff. I think it's probably rates probably eight and a half out of 10. It's pretty good. Now, planetary, okay, is not too bad. Of course, I've seen better. Of course, I've looked through better. Um, but again, this is shorter than F6 and with a 51 glass. Now, if this was a 53 glass, probably would have been a bit sharper and more contrast. If it was a triplet, would have performed better. A triplet with, you know, with 51 uh, would be better. A triplet with 53 would be even better. But being it's a doublet and a 51, and it's this short uh, on the planets, I probably would say most, if you're a pure image, imager, and once in a blue moon, you're gonna look at the planets, you probably would be happy with it. But if you're a serious planetary viewer, uh, viewer, you probably won't be... I've seen some images on a reflecting telescope where maybe collimation wasn't the greatest uh, or cool down. And this actually performed a little bit better than some of the reflecting telescopes I've seen. But again, okay, now if you're talking about planetary, I think I would probably want something longer, something a little bit better. Maybe a doublet 53 glass. Um, so that's my conclusion. If you're a planetary viewer, I think you should just bypass this. For this guy, it did pretty good. I was actually expecting, uh, I would say, a lot worse or more color fringing, but it wasn't that bad at all. And uh, that's it. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe. If you know anybody that wants to get into astronomy, share my link with them. If you're on any of the forums, and somebody's asked maybe a question of this guy or any other the 200 plus videos I did if you can be nice and share my link with that too I do also have members videos going back several months now one video a month plus I'll put your name in the description that's only 99 cents that helps the channel grow so I can show you guys more stuff like this and other videos so again why not you why not me?